New Halo fans asked for it, and Halo Mega finally delivered. This is the Halo Mega Multiplayer Mayhem set. Throughout the years, there's been a few instances in which Halo Mega has given us the opportunity to vote for what set we get next, like this Flood, or even this Countdown set, which you may not even realize was a fan vote. This go-around, Halo Mega designers gave us the chance to vote on Warthogs, and a Mongoose, and some figures with two weapons as well. And this is what we got. It may not be what I voted for, but at a price of $65 and a set they call Limited Release, this thing better be good. The main build of this set is of course another Warthog, and this design could stand out from a mile away. Secondary to the Warthog we have our Golden Mongoose, which is a pretty nicely detailed mongoose and built obviously in the Halo Infinite style. The Warthog is the most surprising part of this set, something I expected to hate but turns out actually looks really nice. Up front I think this might be the first time we've ever gotten black rims and black tires on the same Warthog. The whole collection looks incredible and really shows off the detail of these pieces. Of course the Halo Infinite suspension remains here as well. Even the front piece with two studs hangs over with different colored studs, and the suspension at the bottom even has pink and blue added onto it. I'm beginning to think this might have been the right choice. The hood of the Warthog is smoothed out in all black. Looks really, really good with the pieces that they use. The windscreen also has pink at the base of it, and kind of a pink hue throughout the entire glass. I don't know if that's just the pink at the base, or if the entire glass is somewhat pinkish. Either way, it surprisingly looks really good, and I'm surprised that they were able to get that level of detail in there. Under the glass, just like the other hogs from Halo Infinite, we also have engine detail. Funny enough, the seats here are the first cat ears we get to see, and they're printed on black pieces. As is usual for the Halo Infinite Warthog, we have a nice steering wheel for the driver, and a gear shifter in the middle. On both sides of the cabin, we have nice steps that perfectly allow your minifigures to walk up into their seats, and they even have printing of the UNSC logo. Oh yeah. Of course, you can also fit figures in here too, very easily. They just slot right in there, and there's plenty of space for the legs to move around in, so it shouldn't be really too hard to fit them in. And you can pose them in different ways too, like have them hanging up at the top. The back of the Warthog gives us a little bit more pink coloring, as well as UNSC in the letters at the very bottom. Behind those we get the brightest pink colored gas canisters I have ever seen. Even Barbie would be proud of those. The Warthog suspension is also the same in the back. It's bouncy enough, but I worry those rubber bands will stress over time. The turret on this one is pretty plain and simple. You just have a whole black turret with a little bit of color mixed in there. Of course it can also fit a minifigure, you just grab on those handholds there and it's pretty simple, just as usual. And as it should be the entire turret spins around in 360 degrees. Look, there's even hidden pink in the back. I can't believe they got that color on there, but good effort from Mega's part. And next we have our golden child, the Golden Mongoose. I think the worst of the two, and it doesn't really look very much different from the regular Mongoose. I definitely think we could have chosen a better color. The mongoose wheels are the same as usual, and they look pretty good. It just, we chose the wrong color to get something different. The mongoose fits any of the figures just fine, and the seat is plenty big. The only downside here to this mongoose is that it has that Halo Infinite turning system, which just doesn't work super well and can often lean to one direction or the other without even trying to. Despite its flaws, one fun detail is the UNSC lettering up at the front of the mongoose that is connected with two different pieces. But other than that, this mongoose is very simple. I I really don't think it required a lot of effort from Mega to make this thing, and I really, really wish you guys would have chosen a different color. So while the mongoose is pretty simple, you can bring your entire family to ride just not on split screen. So out of the two builds here, we may not have new designs, but that Warthog is pure gold. But as always, the best part of any Halo Mega set is the minifigures, and these figures definitely don't disappoint. Well, unless you're not a fan of cat ears, couldn't spend $20 on Halo Infinite to get one of these armor coatings, or you don't like it when Halo Mega figures hands break due to holding weapons. We'll talk about that in a moment. However, despite my issues with these figures, Mega did a really good job at making sure these not only have great painted detail, but have awesome weapons. Each of them are unique, and each one is probably going to be exclusive to this set. Thankfully, Mega chose armors that I think a good majority of people enjoy, and they gave us some good customization options. Starting on Gold Team, we can see our first look at the ODST helmet for Halo Infinite. As far as I know, they haven't made this helmet for any other Halo Infinite set, so it should be exclusive to this one. The rest of the armor looks really good, with painted golden detail throughout, and even paint on the hands, which is the second time in a set that we've gotten that. Even the knee pads have paint. You could give the weapons to any of these figures, but this one specifically I gave this battle rifle that's in gold. It looks really good and I think they did a great job with the paint detail, but the back of the Spartan doesn't really have anything on it, and that's a trend with this entire line of Spartans we have here. The backs are just completely barren, which isn't bad, but it just 
is like they almost didn't finish it. Our next figure is Halo Infinite CQB, and you'll notice here that really the only difference is the chest plate, the hands, the arms, they're all the exact same paint and everything else. The back also, again here, is still missing any sort of color. The Spartan technically has the female torso that's made here, so there are a mix of both throughout this, which is a good thing and a bad thing. But the AR here looks really good, and I think they did another good job with this paint detail. But hold on, you said something controversial. Why is female and male torsos bad? Well, it's not bad in Halo Infinite. It's good that we get representation of everything, but with Halo Mega, it's a bit of a different story. Unfortunately, the chest pieces are different for each body type, meaning if you have a male Spartan with a male chest piece, it won't fit on the female quite right, and the female one won't fit on a male at all. This makes customization for this set void, because some of the chest plates just won't be able to be switched on other Spartans. It might make sense in a campaign scenario, but with multiplayer, you want as much customization as possible, because some players might have certain chest pieces and some don't. So if you don't make them all the same type of chest plate, whether it's female or male, then you lose out on being able to interchange every single chest piece you have. This would have been a minor issue if one of Mega's strongest selling points wasn't customization, but it just is. I will say though, the weapons that come with all these figures are absolutely fantastic, and this one is by far one of my favorite. This banker design with this paint job is really good. And our final figure for gold team is the Gungnir, 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 Gunganyanir Spartan, however you're supposed to say that. It is a version with no mask, so it is kind of strange, and I really, really wish our first Gunganyanir Spartan from Halo Mega was one with a mask, especially one that could have looked similar to Halo Reach. I don't know why they decided to go the unmasked version, but it was not the right move. Again, the arms are the same, and the weapons look really good. The sidekick here is painted well. Despite it being a gun that I hate due to the removal of the Magnum, I think it looks great in Halo Mega form and good with this paint job. Each team also comes with a heat wave and cinder shot, both slightly colored differently, but ultimately the same, and they look great. These new molds for these weapons I think are really good, and it's about time we get these weapons from Halo Infinite. And each team comes with an extra helmet. Yes, the cat ear helmet. I admit, I think these look really stupid, but there are fans of this, so I'll just let you have it. Here's cat ears. It looks just like the other helmet with cat ears on top. Why this exists, I don't know, but it exists, and if you like it, hope you like it in Halo Mega. On the other side, all of the armor is identical to what we have with Gold Team, so really here we just have extra paint detailing that's different. And I think this side probably looks a little better. I think the dark background of these figures helps a little bit for the paint to be crisp or to have the appearance of being more crisp, especially with the lines, something you can see very noticeably with the handprint. On both sides, the Mark VII armor I think is my favorite and probably the most unique of these Spartans, and it's the easiest to obtain in Halo Infinite because you don't have to pay $40 for it. Okay. Favorite part about this figure is the robot leg, which is something I haven't gotten from any of the Halo Infinite sets yet, and it's super great to finally have in my collection. I do like the battle rifle too, but unfortunately mine has a slight smudge on it, and I can't get that replaced since this is a limited set. The Gungnir Spartan on this side looks even more goofy than the other one, so I think this might be the worst figure of the set. But it's all not that bad, and you still have some great printing, so you could swap that head out for another black Spartan head. The Cinder Shot here is my favorite of the weapons included in this set, and I think the best of the two new molds. The white painting at the front looks really good, and everything else comes in really nicely. The detail is very fine, and I think Mega did a good job. Even gave us a handle at the bottom too. Our final figure of this set is unfortunately my least favorite. I think the detailing of it all looks really good, and it would have been my favorite if it weren't for the awful hands. Frustratingly, putting any weapon in the hand of this figure completely stressed the hand out, and it doesn't even hold it correctly. So now my hand has this white streak right in the middle that over time, if used, would completely break. This is a disappointing flaw that I've seen in many Mega figures, but the fact that this is a limited release makes it even worse because I doubt Mega is going to supply replacements for these things. It's so unfortunate, especially when I've had figures in this exact same set do great with weapons like this one here. On top of that, I also have issues with the hand on the other side that literally won't spin no matter how much force I put on it. It will not move, so the wrist is stuck in place and the arm won't stay in the socket. Even on this figure, which has a relatively stiff hand, it still spins. I don't understand why Mega didn't do better quality control with a set that's limited release and voted on by fans. It's so infuriating that this hand will not turn, and as hard as I try, I am at the risk of breaking the entire figure with the shoulder joint not working. I don't want to hear that you can fix this with heat or anything else. 
it should have come in the package ready to go. This set has a premium price at $65 and it should have come with premium figures. It is very disappointing. But don't worry, Mega fans, it's all okay. They made cat ears. I actually think the cat ears on this one look better. If you like this, this is probably the Spartan you want. Being a fan of Halo Mega is not always easy, and I don't enjoy being negative, but I can't overlook some of those huge flaws that have hurt the figures in this set. However, I think this set is actually really good, and I definitely would recommend buying it before it's too late. At its price, I expected more from the set, but the reality is, I kind of thought the set would suck, and it's a lot better than I thought. While there might be issues with some of the figures, most of the figures are really good, and the accessories that come in this thing are extraordinary. I don't think any of us know what Mega's true plans are for the remainder of this set and its lifespan, but for now it's still available on Mattel Creations, so maybe if you got a bad one they would replace it i don't know but that's something that will be remain to be seen as the lifespan of this set continues while we wait for all that to unfold watch my reviews of halo mega on the left side of your screen and my latest review of a warthog on the right thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed subscribe and stay tuned for more peace